Så det sker kommer efter at jeg har haft hele morgensamlingen og sånt. Kan nogen ta lyset og sånt? Ja, tusen takk. Og så kommer jeg til å snakke på engelsk, så det blir gøy. That was an animation created by Jeep Cody as promotion material for Midwest Fur Fest 2017, a fair convention held in Chicago where people from all over the world gather around for a weekend and dress up in giant animal costumes. I'm here to talk about the furry community. It's a creative community that centers around animal, ca animal characters. Uh, sometimes it's also called the furry fandom, which is also the, the exact same thing. Uh, this right here is a furry. It's pretty much a fantasy animal that acts somewhat similar to what a human does. Uh, you have seen them before from movies like Zootopia and Fantastic Mr. Fox, and these types of movies and stories are where furries usually get their inspiration from. Uh, the furry community is built up by people who create their own types of furry characters and use them to make their own stories and art. And it's also built up by people who support this style of art. Uh, now, I quickly will side rant so people won't get confused. Uh, you can actually use the term a furry to mean two things. You can use it to describe these animals, and you can also do, to use it to describe someone who takes a part in the community. Like, hey, that guy standing over there talking about furries is a furry. Um, so let's go a bit more into how the furry community functions. Uh, it's largely based around five things. It's about creating and consuming art. Uh, it's about having original characters. It's about pursuing, it's about conventions, and it's about LGBT plus acceptance and openness. So uh, at the very core of the community, we find creating and consuming art. Uh, personally, I really love cool and unique stories, and that's a big reason for why I think this community is awesome, because it's filled with all that. Uh, in the furry community, you will find an overflow of artists, writers, costumers, musicians, and you know, fans of all of this who come together and create and share their own art, their own stories, and all of that cool stuff. Uh, there's honestly extremely many pe creative people in the community, and I absolutely love it. Uh, so since there's so much cool stuff out there, uh, I figured I'd very quickly mention some of it, so we get a slightly better grasp of what I'm talking about. This right here is Mire. Uh, Mire is an astonishingly beautiful comic created by Alector Fencer. Uh, in every single page of this comic, you will find amazingly detailed drawings, and when I read through this thing, uh, the art the art just completely blew me away. Uh, it's really just amazing how much time and effort that she has spent on this thing. Another cool story I've come across is Dreamkeepers, created by David and Liz Lily. It's a very cool story about an orphan that goes on some really epic adventures and stuff, and it happens a lot of cool shit. Uh, and then you have people like Catboots, who is creating a really cute story about being gay in the OOs, or the Zero Zeros, or I don't really know how to pronounce that. But anyways, you will find a lot of cool stories like these ones when you take a part in the community. And I just like want to mention how inspiring it is to see all of these people being so passionate about creating stuff. Like the passion that I see people put into their stories and art in this community, it's incredible and it really rubs off on me. So it makes me passionate about my life and what I try to do. So it creates this, so it creates this bubble of inspiration uh, where we inspire each other to make great things. And that's maybe what I love the most about this community. It's all the art uh, and all the positivity towards art in general, it's really lovely. So yeah, that was the art part. Uh, another very essential part about the community is creating one's own characters, and these characters are usually used to portray yourself within the community. There's two types of characters. There's persona or original character. They're pretty much the same thing, but there's like a tiny difference. Uh, 
So that's white. That's weird. Well, yeah, uh, this right there is my persona. And a persona is what is basically an animal version of yourself, uh, but represented way more like an animal. Um, it can be part about your personality that you put into a character. It can be just you as you already are. Or maybe it can be an idealized version of yourself. Uh, sometimes a persona can have a lot of backstory to it, uh, and sometimes not really. I just have a persona because I saw like other people in the community having them, so I was like, oh, cool, that looks awesome. So I was like, yeah, I need to make one too. So I like the color blue, and I like dogs, so I put the two of them together, and boom, I got myself a persona. And personality-wise, it's just me. Uh, and I buy and I commission art of my persona as I think it's pretty cool to, to have a character that I can express and check, exaggerate my emotions through. Or, and, and there's something really awesome about being able to express your emotions, emotions through art. So yeah, uh, that was my character. Uh, other people might have a lot of backstory to their persona, and some might even have multiple personas. Uh, these right here are Paxi's personas. Uh, all of these characters are different parts about her personality that she has enlarged, and they all have some form of backstory. Uh, to give you one example, uh, the one to the right of the green one is Malum, uh, and it's, an, it's a character that represents her anxiety and earlier depression. So she was having all of these difficult feelings, so she put a character on it to better visualize those feelings. And I think that's pretty cool uh, to be able to do that. Uh, so personas can be used as a deeper form of self-expression or getting a picture of one's own feelings. So you might ask, is it really necessary to go to this extent just to express your personality? And, you know, no, it's, it's really not. But it is, however, quite fun to do it, which is why we do it. So yeah, uh, in conclusion, personas are used as a form of creative self-expression. But the thing is, you can also create a character that isn't based on yourself at all and that you don't really identify with. Well, when it's more like a character that you just think it would be fun to create a story around, uh, it's usually called an original character instead of a persona. So to give another example for myself, uh, this is uh, my beloved original character, the Carpet King. He's a communist dictator whose plan is to take over the world with carpets and eradicate all other living beings. Uh, <laughs> I made him when I was 16, so please don't judge. Uh, no, I was not a communist, and I didn't have any genocidal, genocidal dreams. I just thought it would be a fun character to create, so I got someone to draw him for me. So, personas are usually more focused on self-expression, while original characters usually have more to do with creative expression. But sometimes they can both be pretty similar, and both of the elements can be present in both. But yeah, since we've covered the topic of creating your own characters, I'm going to go over to Fursus, which is like these personas and original characters coming to life in reality. They are handmade, custom-designed costumes, created and tailored specifically to the buyer. And it's around 15% of the fandom that has these types of costumes. Uh, using these is again a form of creative or self-expression, and it can also become a stage of performance. You know, how realistic can you manage to pull this character off? Because standing around still won't really make the costume real. It takes some sort of effort to make yeah, that happen. Uh, the costumes are also very good at breaking down a lot of social walls. People that you don't know and would never have a reason to inter interact with at all will walk right up and talk or play with you, which is pretty neat. Pretty neat. And it's really easy to make people, and especially children, smile and laugh when you dress up like a giant animal. And when you make other people happy, you also get pretty happy yourself. So that's also a, another cool thing about them. So now we have all of these cool characters, and we have all of these cool stories and costumes. So now where are we going to use them? Where will we share our art? And that's obviously where conventions come in. Conventions are gatherings of fur of furries, uh, so that's not very hard to understand. The largest ones take part in the United States with attendance of up to 10,000 people, sometimes even more than that. While here in Europe, the largest one we have is Euroferns in Germany, which had around 3,000 attendees last summer. I was one of them. <laughs> and at these conventions, you have a lot of stuff happening. And there's panels, shows, dance competition, discos, you have a dealer's den and an art show where artists sell their art. You have charity work and maybe even some bouncy castles if you're lucky, uh, and you know, stuff like that. Uh, the most important thing about conventions though is that you have a ton of people running around, having fun, creating friendships, meeting friends, and generally just a lot of people bonding. It's an incredibly social event where people try to have a lot of fun. So yeah, that was a convention in a nutshell. So now we are pretty much finished. Just, just one last thing I want to mention, and it's that furries are massively accepting of LGBT plus members. 
or well, it's more like uh, the majority of furries are LGBT plus themselves. So it's not that weird that they are accepting of it, considering they are, yeah, yeah you get the point. Uh, according to, to the 2016 furry survey, where thousands of furries responded, it comes forth that 23% of furries identify themselves as gay, 30% identify as bi, 10% 10 10 consider themselves pansexual, 6% identifies with asexual, and 4% goes under other. This leaves only about 25% of furries that actually consider themselves straight. Furries are, furries are also seven times more likely than the general population to identify as transgender. So given this composition, it shouldn't really come as a surprise that the community is quite defined by its inclusivity. Uh, the fandom, uh, obviously including the straight peeps, are, embraces norms of being welcoming and non-judgmental to these people. Now the reason for why it has ended up like this, I don't really know. Uh, but I mention it because it has created a very accepting and non-judgmental community. I've never been uncomfortable with who I am in this community. I've, never, I've always felt normal and accepted, and people have never thought of me being me was a weird thing. So, and having such a, an accepting community is, is a very nice feeling, and it's something that I really appreciate. So yeah, uh, that was, that was for uh, In conclusion, uh, it's a very accepting, art-focused community that centers, around, that centers around having fun and being creative. The community certainly doesn't fit everyone, but for those who are in it, it can mean quite a lot. So uh, thank you. I hope you, I hope you all have a great day.